Hi, my name is Consuelo, and today I am going to walk you through building the CoLab Conversation Machine Kit. With this kit, we're going to learn how breadboards work through experimenting with simple circuits using push buttons and LEDs, and also explore how to design a device to help us communicate ideas and feelings. Before we start, let's get familiar with our tools and materials. For this build, you'll need three resistors and three LEDs. LEDs are a particular type of diode that convert electrical energy into light. In fact, LED stands for light emitting diode. LEDs are like tiny light bulbs, but they require a lot less power to light up and they're also more energy efficient, so they don't tend to get hot like conventional light bulbs do. Three push buttons. A switch is a component which controls the openness or closedness of an electric circuit. They allow control over current flow in a circuit. Switches are critical components in any circuit which requires user interaction or control. This one you might be more familiar with, N9 volt battery, and also a snap connector. You also need some jumper wires. They come on a strip like this. To use them, just grab a wire and pull it. If you happen to break one, it's okay, you have plenty of spares. Also, colors don't mean anything specific, you can use whatever colors you like. Finally, we have a breadboard. It's called a breadboard because back in the beginning of electronic building, people were actually putting things together on the board they used to make their sandwiches in. So we still call them breadboards. But actually, it is a solderless breadboard. These are great for making temporary circuits and prototyping because they require absolutely no soldering. We have rows with numbers and columns with letters. Inside of this, there are metal rails that will help us make our circuit work. So, if I tell you to put a component into D5, you'll go to D and then 5. Hey, it's like playing battleship. I also recommend to get some paper for note taking because we're experimenting here, some colored sticky notes for wrapping around the LEDs and some tape for securing the sticky notes. Let's begin with some basics. So what is a circuit? A circuit is a closed loop that electricity can travel around. So at its most basic, a circuit consists of three parts. First part, a voltage source, the power for the circuit. A 9 volt battery and the snap connector will be ours. The snap connector has a plastic connector, the small wire rectangular box at the end of the red and black wires. We will connect the power to the breadboard with jumper wires. So I'm going to use red and black as those are the traditional colors for positive and negative. But remember, all wires are the same, so you're free to choose your favorite color here. Second part of the circuit is a load. So the thing that is being powered could be a motor, a buzzer, or a light. For this circuit, we're going to use a push button switch to trigger an LED. LEDs are polarized, which means they can only be connected to a circuit in one direction if you want them to work. In an LED, the longer leg is the positive connection, or anode, and the shorter leg is the negative connection, or cathode. Current must enter the LED via the anode and exit via the cathode. I'm going to give you a tip here. My way of remembering which leg is positive is to think about the fact that drawing a plus symbol takes twice as much line to draw as a minus symbol. So the positive leg has to be longer than the negative one. Third and final part, the circuit path. For the circuit to work, the path of the power can be interrupted. All pieces have to be in contact. And that's why we have a breadboard. First, notice there are two long columns of holes running down each side of the board. One with the red line beside it and one with the black line. These are called power rails and all of the holes in a single power rail are connected to each other. The small trench or indent that runs down the center of the board breaks the connection so each side could be its own separate circuit. But our project will jump over the trench using jumper wires and send power back and forth. Let's start our build. We'll do it step by step. Get the first push button and place it so that the pins align with C4, C6, F4, and F6. And then gently press into place. Now connect a jumper wire 
from I4 to positive power rail 4. Grab a resistor and bend the sides to make a U shape. Now connect the resistor from H6 to H11. Let's get a LED now. Remember, LEDs are polarized, so place the longer leg into J11 and the shorter into negative power rail 11. Let's go for the second push button. Let's place it so that the pins align with C14, C16, F14 and F16. And then gently press into place. Connect the jumper wire from I14 to positive power rail 14. Let's grab another resistor, bend the sides to make a U shape and connect from H16 to H20. Once again, remember that our LEDs are polarized, so place the longer leg into J20 and the shorter into negative power rail 20. Let's go place the third push button so that the pins align with C24, C26, F24 and F26 and then gently press into place. Connect the jumper wire from I24 to positive power rail 24. Grab another resistor and bend the sides to make a U shape and connect the resistor from H26 to H30. Don't forget, our LEDs are polarized, so place the longer leg into J30 and the shorter into negative power rail 30. We are now ready to go to the final part, the power source. Connect the jumper wire that we attached to the positive part of the battery pack terminal to the positive power rail 1. And then Connect the jumper wire attached to the negative part of the battery pack terminal to the negative power rail 1. We are done! To test your build, simply press a button and the corresponding LED should emit light. Hey, if not, it's fine, just go back and check your connections. These things happen when building electrical stuff. Let's work on communication now. In building this kit, we have made it possible to turn lights on and off. But what can we tell people by turning this colored LEDs on and off? Take a moment now and brainstorm ideas or objects that you associate with the colors red, green, blue and yellow. You can either take some of those ideas or use the ones I picked and write them in bold text on the sticky note that matches the color of the corresponding LED. If you want to draw an image that matches your idea instead, you can try to do that too. Now you just need to roll the sticky notes so you can see the text or image on the front of the paper and tape it so you have a tube. Now, place each tube on top of the lights that they correspond to. And that's it! You've created a conversation machine! You're now communicating the whole ideas without even saying a word. I check back with my friends and we're all using our machines on meetings. Seems like there's a lot of questions. And that was all. Hope you have fun. For more information, visit redhat.com slash colab.